Hey guys, welcome to another Cube World video. So, Cube World will release officially to the public on September 30th, 2019, which means if I upload this on schedule, that's going to be three to four days from now. Everyone has been having a great time trying out all the cool features that Wally's -E been working on for the past six years, but I've noticed a sizable amount of players who aren't too familiar with how to actually play the game and do stuff in it given that there's no tutorials, no guides, nothing like that. Which I honestly don't think is a problem, I mean there was never any built-in tutorial for Minecraft, yet people, they figured it out quite well. But anyway, given that I love to make guide videos and help you guys out, what better way to kick off Cube World Survival Launch with the beginner guide? Timestamps will be located in the description below in case you want to skip to a specific point. And to preface, I'll be making a beginner's guide and an advanced guide. So the beginner's guide will mostly cover like the first, you know, two hours of your time in Cube World and advanced we will talk about some more stuff once you do get your bearings in. How's that sound? Good? Okay. Moving right along. First things first, in spite of its pretty simple looking voxel art style, Cube World is a very demanding game, more so than the likes of Minecraft, especially on the processor and graphics card. I'll put the recommended specs on screen right now, so if you have a toaster of a computer, it might be difficult to enjoy Cube World to the fullest extent. Not a Final Fantasy XV resolution 4K pack, but it does require a lot more than what you normally would expect from a game like this. At the very start of Cube World, you're brought into the character selection screen. When you press start game, it allows you to customize your character's gender, race, class, skin color, and hair color. Relatively subtle, but it gets the job done. I've never been too big a fan of overly complicated character customization from like Blade and Soul. The only thing that changes your gameplay is going to be your class. It doesn't matter what race you play. There are four class branches, Warrior, Mage, Ranger, which is basically Archer, and Rogue. Staple RPG classes, each class can diverge into two different classes for a total of eight. Berserker, Guardian, Fire Mage, Water Mage, Sniper, Scout, Assassin, and Ninja. We'll go more into these classes in another video, but once you create your character, you will spawn in a random area in Cube World. Now for the sake of those wondering, Cube World is a single expansive open world, meaning every player, whether they're playing on single player or multiplayer, you're playing on the exact same layout. There's no seeds in the game anymore, so if you spawn on, let's say, coordinate 1000, and your friends spawn on coordinate 10,000, and if you play together, you two will be 9,000 kilometers away from each other when you do decide to play multiplayer. Fortunately, there is an easy way for you to reach your friends, which I'll get into later on, but everyone essentially plays on the exact same plane, except everything is instance. It's not like if one player completes an area, then no one else can, so don't panic. For basic controls, what you got, you have your left mouse click, which is your basic attack, right mouse click, which is your special attack, and your third mouse click, or commonly known as your scroll wheel click, it performs a somersault in the direction of your character's movement. When in combat, your basic attacks generate MP, which is then consumed by your special attack, and it gets stronger the more MP you have generated. Keyboard-wise, it's relatively rudimentary stuff. You got your traditional WASD movements and spacebar for jump. Important hotkeys go as follows. E is used for a lot of things, interacting, picking up items, talking to NPCs, using specific tools like hang gliders, boats, etc. Your class's specific skill is mapped to your left shift key by default. All of these controls can be changed in the option setting, of course. Lastly, your class's ultimate is your R key, and the cooldown shows on screen as well. I should also mention that F is your lantern key, and T is your pet interaction key. As for user interface, we have B for inventory, C for crafting, M for your minimap, and escape for system menu. Pressing tab allows you to rotate your quick slot item, which is your Q. That's roughly about it, I think. It's pretty intuitive, you can get the hang of it. If you need extra help though, you can press F1, which shows you a list of controls available, or go into your control settings and find every key you can press. On to objectives though, like most other open world exploration games such as Minecraft, No Man's Sky, etc., there really is no real specific objective for you to accomplish. Well, I guess in Minecraft the goal is to beat the Ender Dragon, but no one really considers that the end state these days. Cube World has no start, middle, and end. It's meant to be endless gameplay where you come up with your own priorities and goals. Some players might want to get the strongest gear possible, others might want to explore every biome, and some people might even want to try taming every single pet in the game. It all comes down to what you want to do. Traditionally speaking though, I think the best way to look at it is to think of it as an MMORPG where you run around and complete quests, discover areas, fight cool monsters, take on dungeons. There's a lot of grinding in Cube World, but the benefit of grinding is that you can go at your own pace. Unlike most other sandbox games you played that place emphasis on resource collection, farming, and the like, Cube World prioritizes exploration, quest completion, and combat. Going forward, I'm going to assume you have absolutely no idea what Cube World is, so I don't care if you played the alpha. Actually, Wally completely changed almost everything. So alpha's mechanics are completely irrelevant. Do not let Cube World's very simplistic appearance deceive you though because it has a ton of stuff for you to learn and figure out. Just giving you a quick TLDR of what each system is, then in the future I'll make more detailed videos. 
I would try to cover every system, but we'd be here for like 20 minutes then. Progression in Cube World is not vertically driven, in other words, not by individual character focus. Unlike your traditional RPG where you kill a bunch of mobs, farm EXP, put points into skills, all of your skills are given to you at the start and your means of getting stronger in Cube World is horizontal. It's not based on leveling up, but rather simply slowly getting better equipment and special artifacts, in other words, external progression. Most equipment you run into is region locked, which means they're only fully functional in that specific area. This is mostly a means of preventing you from getting one endgame set and then permanently coasting and speedrunning through every dungeon and quest after the fact, but in the future you will run into equipment with pluses on them that are effective in almost every region. So don't feel too bad about having to start over from scratch every time you want to explore a new area, but this is why I recommend when you're playing with friends to be in the same area as early on as possible, otherwise you'll have to start all over again if one of you guys decide to leave halfway through. Other than plus items, artifacts permanently carry over no matter where you are. These things give you boost to your base stats like more movement speed, more stamina for hang gliding, or being able to stay underwater for longer. So think of every region as resetting your Pokemon's level to 5, but they keep all their IVs and EVs if that makes sense. While these and plus equips are hard to come by, it at least eliminates kind of the early game monotony just a little bit. Much of Cube World's progression involves exploration, so you have to find lots of quests that can range from harmless things like pest control to destroying entire factions. The difficulty of these dungeons and quests range from a star and color rating, with the 1 star rating being white, 2 star is green, 3 star is blue, 4 star is purple, and 5 star is yellow. Naturally, the higher the rating, the more dangerous the threat, so don't be doing them 4 or 5 stars anytime soon. More about that in the advanced guide. As for creature types, we have three. Friendly, Neutral, and Hostile. Friendly entities are characterized by having blue HP bars, mostly NPC town and animals, and other players. You cannot deal any damage to a blue entity. Neutral entities have a green HP bar, meaning they're passive and friendly unless provoked. So don't walk up to a 5-star green HP animal and whack it with your weapon, because they will personally escort you to the gates of hell. Hostile entities are characterized by a red HP bar, meaning if you get too close to them, they can and will always start chasing you down. By the way, pro tip, if you find yourself struggling against an enemy, you can simply outrun the aggro range by letting them chase you until they give up and stop. So if you're trying to run away against most mobs, you should be able to outrun them, you're good to go. What else, what else? Well, I think I can go over, I guess I can go over two more things, but I think I'll leave the rest up to you guys to figure out, or we'll put in the advanced guide. The main means of fast travel is to find various shrines situated around the map. By activating them, they not only become your respawn point when you die near the area, but it also serves as a checkpoint spot to where you can teleport there anytime you want. So for those of you guys who play Pokemon, think of them as like Pokemon centers, and then when you get the HM Fly, you can just fly anywhere you want. Every time you see a shrine, make sure you activate it since it can be helpful later down the road. And probably the last important thing for you is to how to change classes. As I mentioned earlier, each class branch has two different classes, and by default, you start out as a Berserker if you're a Warrior, Fire Mage for Mages, Sniper for Rangers, and Assassin for Rogue. The Guildmaster NPC in most towns and villages allows you to switch to the other class, so if you're wondering where to do that, then there you go. Okay, so after spending literally 10 minutes talking about stuff you perhaps don't even care about, let's get into the meat of the video and go over what to actually friggin do at the beginning of the game. Cube World is region based, like I said before, so every biome you're in comes with its own slew of quests, lore, and things to do. So if you're playing multiplayer, once again, I highly recommend you get together with your friends at the very beginning before starting anything, since things are mostly region locked. When you spawn in Cube World, it comes down to sheer luck, what region you start out in, since you may end up being a brand new player in an area with a bunch of 5 star mobs. What you need to do at the beginning, though, no matter what happens, is to find the nearest town. They provide you with all the services and resources that a player can ask for, especially the Guildmaster and Flightmaster. Best way to do this is to open your minimap and zoom in to where you can see individual landmarks. To use the map, you just gotta left click to rotate it or right click to move it around. And then in order to zoom in or out, just use a scroll wheel. Find any cluster of uniquely colored cubes that look like it can be some sort of civilization and mark it down with the scroll wheel to set a waypoint. Head over there first, you wanna make sure you find a shrine located as close to a town as possible, since by visiting the innkeeper, you can sleep through the night for 10 gold. And trust me, until you have a better lantern, you do not want to travel around at night. It is dark. It is extremely dark. After you gather your bearings, it's time to start figuring out where all the special items are. I'm talking about the hang glider, boat, reins, the spirit bell, sky whistle, climbing shoes, etc. To find these in each region, you gotta talk to a bunch of NPCs. Anytime you run into a village, make sure you talk to every villager there. Some of them can point you to certain quests or locations around the region that can give you equipment or rare items. And whenever traveling, 
and you encounter an entourage of friendly NPCs, make sure you talk to them as well. By doing this, it allows you to have a better idea of where important things are instead of mindlessly wandering about. As of right now, there's very little you can do in town since you don't have any resources or money, so after you change your class if you decide to, head back out and start searching. When going solo, it's very difficult to take on enemies at higher ratings. In fact, the starting equipment you have on, it's probably only possible for you to take on two star green mobs at best, and maybe only one at a time. But if you have a couple buddies with you, then you might be able to handle the three star mobs, you just have to play kinda carefully. Anyway, early on, you'll have to be selective about the mobs you fight. Start by going for all 1 star location. All the special items will be situated in 1 star areas, so don't need to worry if the sky whistle is stuck in a 5 star area. It's not. And while you're going about your exploration, be sure to pick up everything you find, since you'll want anything just in case. You'll start out with a couple potions. Those don't last too long. So collect easy healing items like apples, pineapples, and mushrooms. When you get mushrooms and you take out some onionlings and pick up onion slices, you can make a very effective healing item called Mushroom Spit. You'll find campfires sprawled around the region. Just make sure you go ahead and visit them, do some cooking. Most importantly though, be sure to take in the surroundings and enjoy yourself. If you're one of those players who likes to blitz through a game as fast as possible, I highly advise against it. Stop! Smell the roses, just take your time and enjoy the game. That about wraps it up though for the beginner's guide. Sorry for the rather lengthy video, but there is a lot I wanted to cover. Hope you guys are okay with that. In the advanced guide, we'll talk more about the extra systems like harder dungeons, artifacts, things like that. And I'll make specific guide videos for each one, like on pets and whatnot, so if you're looking for those types of videos, then feel free to stay tuned. There are a lot of players right now who aren't too happy with some of the changes Wale has made to the game. Frankly, I think it's just because they expected beta to be alpha with more content. For both new players and alpha players alike, I advise you just to look at Cube World as it is now. Forget about the alpha. Try to understand the changes Wally has made. I do not consider this game to be perfect, far from it. But at the same time, those who are attacking Cube World just because Wally doesn't want you to get endgame gear and beat every single dungeon in 5 seconds, you guys really need to chill. It's a beautiful game with a lot going for it. Play it for more than 30 minutes before you make proper judgment. I love this game so much, and for all the new players waiting for the 30th, I hope you're excited to sink your teeth into it. If you enjoyed, a rating would be much appreciated. Don't forget to stay tuned for more Cube World content. Gonna try my best to make as many videos as I can, but for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Looking forward to seeing you all in Cube World, and I'll see you guys again soon in the next video. Take care.